Hello and welcome to the 2023 NCAA Division II Baseball Selection Show. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. Before we get started, we should say Happy Mother's Day to those watching. So many mothers did so much to put student athletes in a position to be a part of an event like this. 56 teams are about to learn their path to a title. Eight regions, 16 host sites, with each region being broken up into two pods. North Greenville is your defending champion. They defeated Point Loma 5-3 in the 2022 championship. Now this year's event will once again be played in Cary, North Carolina. We will start this show by announcing the teams in the West region. The first host site, the number one seed in the West is Cal State Monterey Bay. The Otters dominated the CCAA postseason awards. Brady Miguel became the first ever back-to-back -back CCAA MVP. And for the second consecutive season, head coach Walt White was named the conference's coach of the year. Miguel closed out the regular season on a 17 game hitting streak and 41 game on base streak. This is Cal State Monterey Bay's sixth NCAA appearance. Game one of this three team double elimination regional includes four seed Point Loma. Point Loma won its second consecutive Pac West regular season title, ending the regular season on an eight game winning streak. PLNU looking to make another deep postseason run. I mentioned they finished as national runner up last season. Jacob Christian named Pac West Player of the Year after leading the conference in home runs, RBIs, runs scored, OPS, and slugging percentage. The third team in this site headed to Cal State Monterey Bay is the five seed Cal Poly Pomona. Their record 28 and 21, the three time national champions with their most recent title coming in 1983. This is their 15th NCAA appearance. The second West Regional will be hosted by two seed Cal State Bernardino. Congratulations to the Yotes. First ever NCAA Division II tournament appearance. The winningest team in program history, a trio of powerful pitchers lead the way. Austin Coleman, Dylan O'Connor, and Luke Hempel combined for 22 wins. Azusa Pacific is a three seed out west. Will Stroud hit not one but two home runs in a 10 to six win against Point Loma, giving the Cougars their inaugural PacWest tournament title. The sixth and final team to compete in the West region. The sixth seed is Western Oregon. Third straight year in the NCAA tournament. Tenth time in program history. Western Oregon is the automatic qualifier representing the great Northwest Athletic Conference. Seven teams are spread out across two Southeast regional sites. The first is a six teamer hosted by the region's top seed, the 2022 national champions, North Greenville, and for the sixth time in program history, despite two straight losses in the Conference Carolinas tournament, the Crusaders were still ranked number one in Wayne Cavati's most recent power rankings post on NCAA.com. Wayne noted the Crusaders' top five RPI and most wins against teams with a winning record than anyone in Division II baseball. In their most recent game, John Michael Fail tied the NCAA Division II career home run record with his 75th. Reese Fields is 12 and two on the mound while eating up nearly 80 innings of work. Mount Olive is a four seed, the automatic qualifier out of Conference Carolinas after winning four straight elimination games to secure the first league tournament title since 2017 and 15th all time in the Conference Carolinas. Landon Chaboy named tournament MVP after hitting 435 with five home runs, 21 runs batted in over those five tournament games. This is the 19th NCAA appearance for the program that won it all back in 2008. The other school that will be traveling to North Greenville, the five seed Georgia Southwestern Peach Belt Conference automatic qualifier. Congratulations to the Hurricanes here after sweeping Young Harris College in a best of three PBC championship series. The other host in the Southeast is a two seed Newberry. First South Atlantic tournament title for Newberry since 1999. Jacob LeBron, one of seven Wolves named to the all tournament team. He earned MVP honors after going four for seven in the second and third games of the clinching series against Lincoln Memorial, also scoring three runs. Congratulations to Newberry. Their first opponent will be a seven seed UNC Pembroke. Christian Jane has started 51 games this season for the Braves and is hitting 383 with 72 runs scored. 
Belmont Abbey is the three seed in the Southeast and for the eighth time in program history, a trio of sluggers to pay attention to, including Carter Duhame, he has 12 home runs, while Garrett Browder and Ben Ferguson each have 11. Browder was a first team all conference Carolinas selection. At large selection for the sixth seed, Columbus State in for the 29th time in program history. Shout out to Derek Wiley, first team all Peach Belt Conference. He leads the conference with 19 home runs, also 63 runs batted in. Colton Joyner, a 10 and three record on the mound, has registered 83 strikeouts this season. A number of talented teams deserving schools coming out of the South region. That is where we move right now. Eight teams will participate this weekend. The first four team regional to show you up top hosted by the number one seed and no surprise to see Tampa in this spot with a 40 and nine record. Tampa enters the NCAA tournament coming off an impressive three game sweep of Newberry. Over 40 wins 37th NCAA trip for Tampa looking for their ninth championship which would tie Florida Southern for most in Division II baseball. EJ Combo is hitting 439 with 58 runs batted in. The eighth seed with a tough task of taking on Tampa first is Spring Hill. The Badgers three-peat as Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference champions. Nick Hunter was three for three with two runs batted in and an 11-2 victory over Savannah State in that conference clincher. Rollins is rolling right now in the NCAA tournament for the 15th time. This team is clutch already five walk off wins this season, a 15th NCAA appearance. And how about Parker Smith? 20 home runs this season for Rollins. Perhaps some anxious moments, but Valdosta State can exhale. They're celebrating an at large selection after advancing all the way to the championship game of the Gulf South Conference tournament. Despite a hard fought loss to West Florida, the Blazers will make their 23rd appearance in the NCAA postseason as the team is 53 and 48 all time with one national championship back in 1979. JP Gates is hitting 394 with an OPS of 1.042. And the second South pod at the bottom of your screen also with four teams hosted by a team I just mentioned, a two next to West Florida's name. Thanks to Mark Townsend's pinch hit, two run home run. West Florida picked up a 10-8, 10 inning win against Valdosta State, clinched that Gulf South championship and an AQ spot in the field. The Argonauts 24 and two in their last 26 games. Darian McDowell has a 667 slugging percentage, thanks in part to his 14 home runs. The seventh seed is Florida Southern, nine time national champion, 43rd NCAA appearance. Earlier this season, Lance Necro picked up his 300th win as head coach at the plate. Connor Berry has a 607 slugging percentage and 54 runs batted in. Great to say hello to the University of Montevallo. 38 and 14 in for just the second time since 2007. An at large selection, Sam Kaczynski hitting 420 with 16 home runs and 69 runs batted in. The sixth seed is Barry, the final school to show you in the South. The Bucks closed out the regular season with 32 wins, including 16 in conference. First time winning 30 games since 2013, and the first time with a winning record in conference since 2019. Mike Reagan has an 8 and 1 record on the mound this season for Barry. We move on to the South Central region, taking a look now at a couple of double elimination rackets and brackets. And we first show you the three team event hosted by number one seed Angelo State, the Lone Star Conference Tournament champions in the NCAA tournament for the 11th time. Austin Beck hit a three run home run in the championship and was named MVP of the Lone Star Tournament. The only player to be named tournament MVP in back to back seasons. Congratulations to Austin Beck and Angelo State. They'll play in game two. Game one is a 4-5 matchup that features 37 and 17. UT Tyler, just their second year of Division II eligibility, and they are in great season from the Lone Star Conference Freshman of the Year. Kasten Mason, 13 home runs to go along with a 730 slugging percentage. An at-large selection to the field. Congratulations to the Patriots. And the five seed here is MSU Denver in the tournament as an at-large as well. Eric Cox is the RMAX all-time saves leader. 
Tanner Gardner, RMAC Co-Player of the Year, set the school single game record and tied the conference mark with nine RBIs in one game. Ross Smith has the program single season doubles record. After a loss in that conference tournament, Ryan Strain, head coach, said, I think they've earned the right to get into it. Hopefully when the numbers come down, they'll call our name on Sunday. I called your name. The Roadrunners are indeed in the field. South Central Regional 2 is hosted by the region's two seed, Colorado Mesa. They prevailed in the RMAC Championship over the weekend. The clincher, a 21-3 victory over Regis. Stevenson Reynolds, 3-5 for five with a run scored. Five RBI as well. 21 hits, five home runs in this game for the team. The offense continues to impress. Now, Mesa was ranked number one in the May 8th Collegiate Baseball National Poll, an incredible offensive attack averaging over 11 runs per game. And how about Julian Boyd, 81 runs scored, and the team has combined to hit 98 home runs and steal 100 bases, a team to be reckoned with. St. Edwards is the three seed in this region at large spot in the field. Tenth time seeing their name in the bracket in program history. Kyle Curlin and Matthew Giles were named to the Lone Star Conference All-Tournament team. And the sixth seed in is Lubbock Christian. 35 and 21 is their record. Fourth NCAA appearance and first since 2019. The team has slugged 78 home runs this season, led by the 14 from Chris Scholl. To the East region we go, where you will see seven teams on the screen. The region's top seed is Southern New Hampshire. Their record 37 and 11, 11th NCAA appearance. Nick Schwartz was named the Northeast 10 Northeast Division Player of the Year, while Jeffrey, Jeffrey Prammy earned the Northeast Division Pitcher of the Year Award. The fourth seed is Franklin Pierce. Three times in program history, the Ravens has finished third in the national championships. This is their 18th NCAA appearance in program history. Pace is the five seed. A first ever Northeast 10 tournament championship puts Pace in the field for the first time since 2013. Mitchell McCabe has a team leading 42 runs batted in. Pace beat Franklin Pierce Saturday to win the conference crown. And there you see these two schools will meet again this weekend. And then the bottom of the screen, four teams headed to this regional. Let us first, though, introduce the three seed, 31 and 19 Lemoyne. The Dolphins, an at large qualifier after falling to Pace in the Northeast 10 tournament. Senior Sam DeGeorge has a 12 and 6 record on the mound, a 1.60 earned run average. This is a sweet 16th NCAA appearance for Lemoyne. First game is against the region's sixth seed, Queens, New York, the automatic qualifier representing the East Coast Conference. Queens College back in the tournament for the first time since the 1998 season. They earned the AQ after defeating two-time defending champion Malloy in walk-off fashion. Nine, eight, and 10 innings. Senior Anthony Fontana named the ECC Tournament MVP. Congratulations to coach Chris Reardon and Queens, New York. The two seed and the host school for this four team regional is Goldie Beacom. Johnny Campus, Kyle Walker and Jake Kelchner brought home first team all Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference honors and just a second time for the Lightning to see their name in an NCAA bracket. Campus fourth in the country with a school record 42 stolen bases also has a school record 18 doubles. The seventh and final team to show you in the East is Felician, Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference automatic qualifier. A 7-5 green and gold victory over Post has Felician here. Seven home runs and 40 RBI this season for Chris Fernandez. Let's move on now to the Midwest. Seven schools will compete in two regional pods. The number one seed is worthy of praise. Shout out to host institution Quincy. 44 wins set a program record for wins. The number one seed in the GLVC tournament holds up after a 13-6 win against Drury on Sunday. Fifth in the most recent collegiate baseball poll, Luke Napleton leads a team full of sluggers. 27 home runs on the season as a team Quincy, 117 round trippers. Napleton named the GLVC player of the year. The four seed in as the AQ representing the GLIAC is 
Wayne State, Michigan. They clinched the conference tournament title this afternoon with a 4-2 win over Grand Valley State in the If Necessary game. Four major conference awards this year. Ryan Kelly named the conference's coach of the year. Carter Fitzpatrick, conference's pitcher of the year. Rudy Ramirez, the player of the year. And rookie Tony Hatsy Giorgio, the GLIAC freshman of the year. They will take on a five seed Northwood Thursday afternoon, sixth NCAA appearance for Northwood. They're six and ten all time in NCAA tournament play, taking the GMAC tournament championship after a pair of 9 3 wins against Ohio Dominican. Jacob Ravicki's home run gave Northwood 61 on the season, which is a new program record for home runs in a season. Northwood has now reached the 40 win milestone for just the second time in program history as you see some highlights of Northwood on your screen. Midwest Region 2 is hosted by the two seed Illinois Springfield at large selection for UIS. Fifth time for the Prairie Stars to see their name in the field at the plate. Mike O'Connor and Brandon Bannon have 46 and 45 runs batted in respectively. Ryan Carmack, 100 strikeouts and 58 innings pitched. Their first opponent, an at-large selection, seven seed for UND. Brady Ware etched his name into the NCAA history books as the first person to ever throw a no-hitter and hit for the cycle in the same game. Drew Donaldson hitting 424 with a 712 slugging percentage, nine wins on the mound for Brandon DeWitt, and four saves, 18 strikeouts for EJ White in 19 appearances out of the bullpen. Good job, Greyhounds, the three seed is Maryville, Missouri. It was the best of times and worst of times for Maryville on Saturday. They defeated William Jewell in a 14 inning thriller before then falling to Quincy later in the day. But despite that loss, they can celebrate in the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. The sixth seed is Ashland in the tournament for the 19th time in program history. Brendan Beaver, the great Midwest pitcher of the year and redshirt freshman right fielder Chris Franks, the circuit's freshman of the year. Moving on, two regions remain. Let us show you the central where eight teams are in, meaning we have two different 14 double elimination regionals. The first central school to highlight is the four seed Washita Baptist in for the second straight season, fourth time in program history. They'll play a five seed Augustus, South Dakota, Augustana, South Dakota. That is the seventh time for the Vikings in the NCAA tournament. Seth Miller was voted by the Lee's coaches as the NSIC Outstanding Senior of the Year in Baseball. Dre Dirksen, first team all conference, all defensive team. Augustana, South Dakota is in as the five seed in the central region. The host of this four team double elimination regional, the number one seed is Central Missouri, fifth straight and 16th MIAA tournament title for Central Missouri. The Mules have made a major statement with a 15 0 victory over Missouri Southern. John Prudham and Carter Young have 16 home runs apiece this season for Central Missouri. They will host 32 and 18 St. Cloud State. Hashtag Husky Land, the 2023 Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference champions. 11th time for St. Cloud State to participate in this prestigious tournament. John Nett hitting 446. He has 90 hits and 60 runs scored this season. In Central Region 2, the three seed is 39 and 16 Southern Arkansas, the top seed in the Great American Conference Tournament over the weekend. That seed held up with a 7-6 victory Saturday against Oklahoma Baptist, clinching the AQ spot in the field. Justin Pettigrew won the third. GAC Coach of the Year honor in his time. Brett McGee, all GAC first team, all GAC defensive team, and GAC tournament MVP. Broke the SAU and GAC career home run records earlier in the season. Jeremy Adorno became just the second pitcher in program history with multiple seasons of 100 strikeouts. This is Southern Arkansas's 15th trip to the tournament. They'll match up with Minnesota State in the first game of this double elimination regional. 40th time for Minnesota State to participate in the Division II baseball tournament. The Mavericks are an at-large selection after falling to St. Cloud State in the NSIC championship a short time ago. The two seed and host here is Missouri Southern State. 
eighth NCA appearance at first since 2015 for Missouri Southern State. Over the weekend, Matt Miller passed David Fisher for second in games played with 214. Also, Ethan Clark, most RBIs by a freshman in program history. Next, we say hello to Arkansas Tech, the final school to show you in the Central. Keaton Ranallo leads the team with a 607 slugging percentage, 122 total bases, and just the third time in program history for Arkansas Tech to see its name on the screen. Moving on to the Atlantic, where seven schools are still dreaming of a championship. And we start by showing you the region's top seed, 40 and 8 Millersville, the 10th straight appearance for Millersville in the tournament. Anxious to get back on the field after an early exit from the PSAC tournament. Bren Taylor, a player to watch, hitting 415 with 23 extra base hits at last. Check the Marauders pitching staff leads Division II and whip. Grad student Carson Kalina, 7 and 1, 2.03 earned run average with a team leading 59 strikeouts. The first game on Thursday at Millersville features a four seed, Charleston, West Virginia. Catcher Tyler Dellerman, named the MEC Player of the Year, led the league with 57 RBIs, 60 runs scored. He also hit 16 home runs. This is the Golden Eagles' fourth trip to the NCAA tournament. Westchester is the five seed and at large spot in the field after advancing to the BSAC championship before falling to mighty Seton Hill. The 2012 and 2017 national champions are in the tournament for the 19th time in program history. Props to Joe Messina on earning the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Baseball Champion Scholar Award. Congratulations to Westchester. Now, speaking of Seton Hill, they are the region's two seed and a host of Atlantic Regional 2. The school's baseball Twitter account said, never a doubt the Griffs are PSAC champs. This came after a 10-0 no-doubter win against Westchester. Vinny Rosso named the PSAC Tournament MVP. He was 11 for 17 over those four games. Scored eight runs, eight runs batted in. A dominant weekend indeed as the Griffins outscored four opponents, 48 to eight, including three mercy rule games. Jack Whalen named the PSAC West Freshman of the Year. 45 stolen bases, which ties a conference single season record. The seventh seed in the Atlantic is still up in the air. It will be determined by the outcome of the Mountain East Conference Championship game still being played at the time of this show, check back on NCAA.com for information as soon as that becomes available. The three seed in the Atlantic is East Stroudsburg, an at-large bid after falling in the conference tournament opener. PSAC Pitcher of the Year Chase Nowak set the program's all-time innings pitched record after firing the 264th plus inning of his career. Nowak joined Mike Kelly, Tom Resinger, Reisinger, Nick McAulphin, Cameron Hubbard as first team all conference selections, most for the school since 2016. And in as the sixth seed, the final school to show you on this program is Mercyhurst, 16th NCAA appearance, six and two on the mound for Jarrett Heilman. He has six complete games and 64 strikeouts this season. That concludes the Atlantic region. So there you have it. Our 56 team field is complete. All regionals are double elimination will be played May 18th through the 21st. Regional winners advance to a best of three super regional the following weekend and the teams who make it through that will earn a trip to Cary, North Carolina for the national championship held at the USA Bay Bay Baseball National Training Complex hosted by the University of Mount Olive from June 3rd through June 10th. Be sure to follow NCAA.com for updates and recaps throughout the tournament. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. Congratulations to all the players and coaches preparing for the postseason. Best of luck in the NCAA Division II Baseball Tournament. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe.
Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.